In today's adventure in photography and Photoshop, we're going to recompose a final piece of artwork to focus the story and impact for the audience. We'll discuss why the original composition for this final artwork was chosen, why we need to change it, what document size we'll create in Photoshop and why, use the rule of thirds to compose the frame and Skynet to fix the problems of going from a portrait orientation to landscape. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagine. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. This image is a part of my upcoming portfolio for boudoir photography, and I will be featuring it in an article that I'm writing for Shutter Magazine, their May edition. While on set, I composed this shot, seeing the storytelling opportunity of the audience's view, traveling up the stairwell to land on the subject and let her pose, her clothing and expression complete the story. I felt that the travel for the viewer would help add to the impact of this image. However, during the editing process in Photoshop, I consistently speculated if a recomposition was in order for this artwork and spoilers, I decided that it was needed. Let's dive into the photoshops and recompose this image to create a new story and impact. Introductions as always to get us started. This is my wonderful friend Kiara and I would love to be able to say that you can see more of her amazing artwork by visiting the Instagram account, but unfortunately she's in Instagram jail right now. Scandalous. Ooh. Why, Kiara, why? Because Instagram is a prude and apparently it doesn't like featuring human beings in their images. And that's a story for another time. But she's wonderfully talented. You can see more of her artwork from this series in the May edition of Shutter Magazine. Now, if you've never heard of Shutter Magazine, look at the description below. There will be a link to the magazine. It's one of the nation's leading magazines in photography and Photoshop education. I have written for it many times. I truly think it's a wonderful repository of information and it is free to read online so go to the description below and go to their website to sign up and read the magazine looking at this image let's run the rule of thirds and kind of get an idea of what was going on so the bottom half of this 33 percent of the real estate of this image is that stairwell with that horrible leopard print carpet this was a space that i rented for the portfolio shoot and that carpet i just looked at it and thought I feel bad for Chitara because somebody killed her, skinned her, and threw her on the floor. But anyway, with this being 33% of the real estate of the image, that means it's integral to the storytelling here. It's It plays a part in a way in the same aspects that Kiara plays a part to the story of this image. And as I continued to edit the image, I started to feel like I, I want to see more of Kiara. I want the audience to connect with her more than what's going on right now. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna resize the frame and portrait orientation. So to do that, I'm hitting V for the move tool unlocking the background layer because i have this icon checked on the move tool that says show transform controls i now have the transform controls holding alter option coming to one of the corner transform controls i can resize all of them at the same time because i'm holding alt or option so resizing it a little bit moving around and going okay great we've effectively zoomed into her a little bit more the audience can connect with her a little bit more it should achieve the goal but it doesn't it's still nagging at me and my creative mind while I'm in Photoshop wants a change to the artwork. So that leads me to my first teaching moment here. When you're a photographer on set, listen to your instincts, flow with the creative energy on set with your subject and trust what you do there. Don't second guess it, especially when it comes to composition. Use all of the available elements on set to help guide that composition and be satisfied with the work. But there is nothing wrong when you go from photography to the other creative space of digital photography, which is digital photo editing like Photoshop. If your creative instincts, if your creative soul, if your inspiration, whatever your label you want to put on it, says something needs to change, run with that. Embrace it and try something new. That is the beauty of digital photography and digital photo editing. We can take what we saw on set that we were pleased with and potentially give it a different life, a different story by changing the composition itself. So as I continued to work with this in portrait orientation, I kept thinking, no, we need to eliminate dead Chitara on the floor and change the overall composition from portrait orientation to landscape. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command and the letter N for new, which is gonna bring up the new document window. 
I'm going to make a 10 by 20 new document, 20 in width, 10 in height, 300 resolution, 16 bit, because 16 bit is so much better than 8 bit. And at the bottom color profile is Adobe RGB 1998. Hit create. Now, while in the workspace, I'm going to hit controller command in the minus key a few times to zoom out the workspace. Go back to the image of Kiara. Hit V for the move tool and hold the shift key and then drag it up to untitled one. And because I'm holding the shift key, no matter where I put my arrow, it's going to drop the image precisely right into the center of the document. Now this original file size and orientation of the image and so forth, I'm going to move around paying attention to the rule of thirds. I want to get her close to that left third. And I think right about there actually looks really good. There are a few things in here that could potentially be considered bad photography acumen, like her elbow getting cut off at the top of the document, or we don't see all of her knees or her legs, and that will be the subject of my final thoughts at the end of the video. But let's continue forward. I'm gonna run the rule of thirds now. Yara is intersecting with this upper left third with her face, that looks good. I'm gonna kind of move her around just a little bit and play and see what I can come up with. and. I think I'm getting her closer to the center uh, section where she's going to intersect with that upper left third, which is kind of one of the things you want to do with the rule of thirds. You want the subject to either be playing center balanced in these three columns or to interact with where these columns and rows meet in these third quadrants. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to nudge it just a little bit. I mean, her eye and nose doesn't have to be bullseye right there at that point, but I think that looks overall pretty good. So now I just need to use Skynet to fill in the rest. So what I'm going to do is flatten the overall document. So now we're just dealing with one layer that's the background and has this white space. I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool and make a selection outside the document and come down and just keep clicking to make those anchor points with the lasso tool and get right around this little wall and then go to the outside of the documents and connect the rest of it. Now we only see the marching ants inside the documents. You won't see it out here at all, but it's pretty much selected everything in here all the way to the edge of the document. With that selection active, I'm gonna come up to edit down to content aware fill. This is a new dialogue for the content aware fill option that uses Adobe Sensei, which is the AI to be able to make up new stuff. This new dialogue came out in Photoshop CC blah 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 and it works beautifully because anything that you see that's painted in green is photoshop's way of saying we're going to source potentially this material to make up something new over here to fill in whatever you selected and over here on the right you get a live view of what it is and within seconds it filled in a pretty good amount of empty space that it needed to fill and it looks beautiful so i'm going to go ahead and hit okay it's going to take us back into Photoshop. Now I need to hit Control D to deselect and then look at the layer stack. This new layer is essentially all of that new content that Adobe Sensei created with Content Aware Fill. I'm just going to go ahead and flatten them down and we're finished. It looks good. There's one final little thing that I want to do and I want to create a new vignette. A vignette is a wonderful way to push the audience's focus into the subject of the image. And my favorite way of doing that is to create a solid color adjustment layer. I wanna change the color to be pure black. So RGB values are set to zero, hit okay. Then change the blending mode of this solid color adjustment layer to soft light. And that's going to darken the image significantly. Then select the layer mask. I'm going to hit G for the gradient tool. I want to make sure that I'm on the radial gradient, opacity of 30%. I need to choose the actual gradient that I want to work with, which is foreground color to transparency. Right now my foreground color is set to white, so that's why it's white to transparency. And I'm going to click that to make sure that it's active. That I need to just switch my foreground color to be black. And I'm doing that by clicking this little arrow icon. Now I can start using the radial gradient to simply start pulling in the focus of where we need it to be. I'm painting black onto the layer mask to reveal and letting that shadow just kind of fade off over here in the distance. Plus the vignette has a added benefit of hiding any tiny little imperfections that are due to the AI creating all that new content. Let's revisit it one more time just to make sure that it looks good. Let's look at the layer mask itself just to see I'm painting black. So it's hiding the effect of the solid color adjustment layer. And that black circle is over where Kiara is so that we see her in the original luminosity values of the image and the darker areas on the outer perimeter. So it's pushing the audience's focus in. This to me is more interesting, more impact, more story. We read left to right. So generally we want to travel from left 
to the subject on the right or into the center of the image. I'm kind of going against that idea just a little bit. And I'm okay with that because sometimes going against the rules can be fun and create really cool artwork. So I like the flow of this. I feel like this isolates Kiara a little bit more. The real estate of the image, we still have a generous amount here that is just exposed empty brick wall, but because it's so neutral, the audience's eyes dismiss it quickly and stay with her. Whereas before in the original document, there's so much more else to look at like dead Chitara, the wall, the brick and so forth that we may lose the subject. When I was on set, I liked the story of what I saw. I liked shooting up the stairs. But as I step into my other creative role of a Photoshop digital artist, I look at it and go, no, this is a better story. And I like what I see. So now let's dive into the final thoughts of this video today. My final thoughts revolve around changing the overall paradigm of what you think rules are and that they need to be followed or not. Talking about her elbow going off frame, this is something that if you want to have good photography acumen, you're not supposed to have any body part that goes outside the frame. Oftentimes when you're doing a headshot or a waist up shot, you'll see the hands where they get cut off, uh, cut off at the knuckle. And that's something that a judge or another photographer could critique your artwork and say, well, that's not following the rules there. You shouldn't be doing that. Rules are meant to be followed and they're there for a good reason. I'm not disputing that at all. But part of the freedom of creativity is to question those rules and challenge them sometimes. That's why the elbow doesn't bother me. That's why it doesn't bother me that I'm going to take the pure form of photography that I captured on set and dare to change it to be something else in the digital photo editing world. And it's surprising to me in the year 2022 how many artists are still resistant to the idea of capturing images with a digital camera, a DSLR, a mirrorless camera, not a film camera, capturing those images using good photography acumen and rules and skill sets, but having the intention of taking that imagery into Photoshop, into digital photo editing, and changing it, augmenting it, enhancing it to be so much more. It's a wonderful journey of art making. And there are folks who resist that, and that's, that's their issue. That's their journey, that's their story. Don't let it affect your creativity. Don't let it give you a fear or an anxiety that you aren't doing enough, you're doing too much. Your art will speak for itself. Yes, seek out advice, seek out the reviews and the feedback and critiques of the people that you trust, but still follow your instincts. Find a good balance between what's right and what's right for you. That's the end of this video today. If you like the content you found in it, then please give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content debuts each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to so be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks so much for watching today and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.